Well, welcome to another edition of the Buyer's Guide. In this edition, we're going to be looking at it's a ground bait that to long-term viewers of this channel will be very familiar with. I haven't talked about it for quite a while now and I have still been using the mix in certain scenarios. And the mix we're going to be looking at in this edition is the exceptionally well-known Bait Tech Karma. Now the Karma Method Mix is very, very well known to a lot of you. I've won festivals with this mix and I've also won open matches with it. I've fished with it on its own, but most people will probably be familiar with, with certainly with my videos using this mix when I've mixed it with Special G Green, which is another bait tech mix that we'll have a look, on, look at in another edition. This mix is, it's very well known, it's quite a fine mix and it is available in one kilo and two kilo bags so be very very careful if you are buying or trying to purchase this online or from a tackle shop online because they don't always advertise what size bags this ground bait actually comes in now just to have a quick look at the packaging we've got a window on there so that gives you a great sneaky peek at what this mix is all about it's a very fine quite a light colored mix but it's very very fine it does say it's a method mix so that gives you an idea of what it's like depending on how you mix it that you know it will allow you to mold it round a method feeder but I've won matches with this using it in a cage feeder so it's a very versatile mix it's a unique meaty mix and that was something that kind of put me off at first before I ever used this mix about four or five years ago I was just focusing on the word meaty mix um, but as we know skimmers and bream certainly on commercial waters meat can be fantastic at certain times of year and this is also advertised as a fast breakdown mix as well again it's lending itself to method feeder fishing but like I say I have won matches with it using a cage feeder maximum fish catching attraction now if you have a look on the website it actually states that this mix is it's a fast breakdown mix it's got biscuits in there and it's got fish meals in there as well as meat proteins okay so this is a mix that I've really used throughout the summer months I've used it on natural venues and commercial venues and one of the key details to this mix is that it's been designed with maximum fish attracting um, additives in here and ingredients with minimum feed so that's the real key to it and you can see that just by looking at the window there is actually minimum feed in there so it's more about triggering bites rather than actually feeding the fish if we flip the bag over um, it's saying on there loading of the method feeder with karma so it's just a bit of a guide um, as regards using this mix if you are going to be using it on um, on a method feeder and there are some tips there for you tips for method feeder fishing uh, and there's a few tips on there I won't read them all out to you obviously you can play this back it is a video so you can just stop and pause it if you want to read all those but it's nice that it's giving you tips about how to get the most from the mix because obviously the more fish you catch with it the more um, likely you are to go out and buy it again so um, we've got uh, a bit of a description on here as regards the mix itself Karma is a highly versatile ground bait it can be used for all methods of fishing it's a very versatile mix and what I'll do is I'm not going to read all this packaging out for you as far as details go actually on the packaging this is probably the most information I've seen on the back of a bag of ground bait so this is a video so rather than me read all those out here which will be interesting obviously but I'm sure you don't need to hear all the details if I run the packaging under the video like that for you you can stop and pause it and read these details back which will give you more information about the mix and what it's designed for okay now this is a two kilo bag um, as you can see we don't have and I don't think we have any sort of batch numbers on here I don't know if bait tech do that but let's oh here we go the real fine print I don't even know if you're gonna see that on the camera there we go 05 2020 so I'm assuming that's kind of a use by date this particular bag you could probably tell how it's packaged how it's so tightly packed it's been in my stock down here for at least two years i had quite a bit of a stock of this so i've been using it gradually so um, it has got a good shelf life on it but what we're going to do now is i'm going to mix it up we're going to have a look at what kind of feed is in here i'm going to mix it up in a bowl for you just show you how it mixes up whether we can over wet it what kind of consistency it is does it darken down much when we wet it and then i'm going to pop it in the tank and we're just going to have a look at how it performs underwater 
So I've got a rectangular bowl that we use for all this series and I've also got a sieve there as well. So that's, I'm gonna pour this into the bowl through the sieve itself and that'll just give you an idea of how much feed or how little feed there is actually in this mix. Now one of the questions that I got asked in a previous video is what kind of a mesh or diameter mesh am I using for this? I've got this little tool here, if I pop that in there, mesh just there for you as you can see and if I flip that over that's giving you a reading of what the diameter of the mesh is so hopefully that helps that person out and just gives you an idea of how fine this mesh is so what we're going to do is yeah fish meal it's it's quite a strong mix actually I haven't used this for quite a while and that's it it's reminded me you know it is quite a strong fish meal mix it is designed for, mainly for commercial fishery uh, fishing so it's fish meal it is quite a strong mix We'll adjust the camera up there for you. Quite a light colour mix as you can see. And judging by what's going in there, there's going to be very little feed left on this sieve, if anything. If anything, I'm guessing it would be just some of the dry, dry ground bait itself. So if we push that through. Right, as you can see there, if I hold that up to the camera, that is... It is feed. There is a bit of feed there. I thought that was going to be the dry ground bait because that's been packed under pressure with more ground bait on top of it. I thought this was going to be some of the dry ingredients that have kind of um, stuck together as it were and they could be pushed through this sieve quite easily. That is a tiny bit of feed. There we go. But that's all there is from all that mix. And obviously if you didn't want that in you could just sieve that out just exactly like I've done. So you're going to be left with a really fine mix. But we don't want to do that. We want to see the mix for itself. So I'm going to pop all them back into the mix. So if I move that sieve over there, so as you can see, really fine mix, all right, light coloured. So what I'm going to do is mix this up now, let's have a look, see how it mixes. I dare say the smell of that fish meal and the mix itself is going to get stronger as we mix it. Don't forget when you're mixing ground bait, it is always best to do it with a round bowl, okay, if you've got access to one. But I'm just doing this on in a rectangular bowl, just because it's better for filming. So there will be some lumps there, just from where it's actually you know gone into the corners and stuff, and where some of the mix has taken on more water than the rest. Okay, so I'm gonna add some more to this. If I remember when I used this mix last time, which is probably about a year ago, it was last summer, I think it was. I was surprised by how much water it actually took on. But as always, mix your ground bait little and often. Okay, just add it a little bit at a time. You don't, you know, what you put in there, you can't take out. So just add a little bit at a time and as it dries out you can just add more to it because once you've over wetted it and it's gone too far you can't bring it back you've ruined your mix then okay so the last thing we want to be doing is wasting wasting good ground bait so as you can see there's a few lumps there I'm not mixing this with a drill regular viewers to this series know will will know that I don't use a, gr a drill for mixing any of the ground baits because most people don't use drills anyway Okay, so if, obviously if I mix this with a drill, it would be much finer than this, there would be less lumps in there. But that's not a true reflection on how most people would mix their ground bait if they were to buy this ground bait, so that's why I'm doing it this way. So there we go. I'm not going to add any more to that. It has darkened down slightly. Okay, obviously I haven't put it through a sieve or anything yet, so there's still lumps in there. Let's have a look at what it's like at the moment, before we sieve it. To be honest, it's actually, it's hardly changed colour at all. If I put the dry ingredient in my right hand, and that's the, the mixed on the left, there's hardly any difference there whatsoever. That's that's quite surprising. I thought it was going to darken down more than that. We'll see what it's like when it's at its rest, or when we've allowed it to rest and take on more water. So as, as with every ground bait in this series, I'm going to give this exactly 20 minutes. Normally in a match situation, I'd give it longer than that. I would mix this as soon as I got to my peg. So most matches you get at least an hour to set up. So this would have at least an hour to rest. And I strongly recommend that with all your ground baits. But in this scenario for this test, it's going to be exactly 20 minutes. Well, that's been exactly 20 minutes. I've had to add a little bit of extra water to it, but Unlike some of the other videos, I'm actually going to put this through the sieve for you actually on video. So that's what the mix is like at the moment. As you can see, there's still quite a few lumps in there. So I'm going to pop that back through the sieve. Okay, so we can have a, a look at what's left in there. Just sieve that through like we would do normally. Lots of lumps still left in there. And I see people throwing those away, you know, on a mix like this. I, I never throw lumps like that away. Ground bait can work out how expensive as it is. You don't want to be throwing those away because all they are are just 
ground bits of ground bait that have got more water to in them than the rest of the mix okay we've added it just by hand and that's what happens some areas have taken on more water than the rest so all we can do is just simply push that through and that way you're not going to be wasting ground bait okay if as always there is feed in this mix and that's going to be left out, left on the sieve anyway and that's what we strongly expect to see all that all those um, all those bits of feed that we saw from the dry mix that was left on the sieve they will obviously all be left here as well again okay and we're going to leave that in the mix because we'd like to see how they're going to perform when we put this mix in the water to do uh, to do the tank test there we go so we've pushed the mix through and it, again those bits of feed are still left there so we're going to pop them back into the mix okay pull that out of the way and that's a lovely fine mix that we're left with now it will bind well I know it will because it's a fine mix so you could boil it in that's fine you could feed that even in deep water I bet that would bind really yeah that binds really well but the packaging just state that it's a quick or a fast breakdown mix so you could still squeeze the balls nice and hard like that so they're going to go down to the deck but the mix is advertised as a fast breakdown so it should break down quickly once it's on the bottom okay so that's great I'll just compare the two between the dry mix for you now because I did have extra water to the mix so that's the dry mix straight out of the bag and that's the wet mix hardly any difference hardly any okay so the color that you see through the window on the packaging is pretty much what you're going to get when it's actually mixed I know a lot of people focus a lot on the color of ground baits certainly in clearer water and that sort of thing so if you're one of those people then the color that you see through the window on the packaging is pretty much what you're going to get when it's mixed okay now the next part of the test is we're going to see if it can be over wetted all right so if i just portion a little corner off here for you i don't want to add too much over wetting ground bait is something that we do a lot and a lot of people do it on different um different for different methods you can do it with feeder fishing with certain types of feeders but people do it on the pole as well you know you might be feeding sloppy ground bait or just sometimes just just wetting it a little bit can just give off a different sort of a cloud i'll show you that in the tank in a moment okay one of the experiments we haven't really done much of in this series is over wetting and the over wetting cloud that you can get from ground bait so i'm adding that into this edition for you so there we go we can over wet it i mean i've really over wet that for a mix that wouldn't go in a feeder but as you can see that's really over wet you'll probably hear it hit the bowl there we go really sloppy so you can over wet it like i say i've tend to um, use this when I've mixed it with Special G Green, but in this case it's just on its own, but I have one matches with it on its own. So, we know it's little feed, it's advertised as fast breakdown, we'll see that in a moment. We can over wet it and we know we can squeeze it into nice um, hard balls if you, need to, if you need to do that. But what I'm going to do now is, I've got a nice cage feeder here, okay. This is just a typical, it's a large size, um, it's one of the new side weighted cage feeders, it's got a really fine wire mesh. That means the water is going to get to this feeder really or get to the ground weight really quickly i want to pop this into the tank so we can see how it performs now when i put or fill this feeder with ground bait it's a, obviously it's been put through a sieve so it's nice and fluffy i've squeezed that in as though i was, I was going to cast that about 50 meters which is you know the most um on most occasions that is how you would pack your ground bait in that sort of consistency i'm not going to squeeze it in really really tight I've just squeezed it in medium pressure if there is such a thing just so we can see how it's going to break down so I'm going to move that camera to there and let's see how it performs underwater okay so just under medium consistency or medium pressure if I drop that into the middle of the tank for you there we go and straight away you can see that there's hardly anything coming off that Lots of little tiny air bubbles and that's because it's a nice fluffy mix. We've put it through a sieve. And that's not breaking down very quick at the minute at all. Obviously this is a cage feeder, it's advertised as a method feeder mix. And with a method feeder the water can get to the ground bait much much quicker obviously because there's nothing, um, it's not encased in anything, in anything like it is in a cage. Now that's a really slower, slower breakdown, it's a more controlled breakdown. There's virtually nothing coming off it. Looking at the top of the or the surface of the water, there's virtually nothing. There's nothing come off it, so there's no dry ingredients that are fizzing up off the mix. With a mix like this, it would generally be advertised as a um, 
a bigger fish mix so it's a mix that's targeted you know targeting uh, bream and carp as well so you'd expect it to be quite inert um, and if that's the kind of mix that you want a lot of people mix that the night before to make sure it's taken on more water it's had more time to rest so it is more inert but as you can see I've that's only been mixed 20 but well 25 minutes now um, and that's really inert that I mean just look how clear the water is there's just virtually nothing there's no cloud coming off it and that's why it's advertised as a method feeder mix you know when you're fishing the method you generally have to carp you have to bottom feeding fish carp and bream you know the bigger fish and that's exactly what this mix is all about now that I've got to be absolutely honest with you the ground bait is staying in that cage a little bit longer than I, I really expected I thought this was going to break down really quickly but like I say it's designed as a method feeder mix and that cage is obviously just holding it in nicely it's breaking down really it's almost it actually says that word on the packaging it melts from the feeder and I think that's what you're seeing that's what you're seeing from both ends if I move that camera around to there so that you can see the front of the feeder you can see how it's literally just melting away from the cage really nice and controlled I bet if I'd squeeze that really really tight if I move the camera back for you if I'd squeeze that really really tight I bet you could really slow it down even even more slow you know the breakdown of the ground bait I'm gonna do another test um, I haven't done that before in this series I'm gonna do another test straight after this and that test is gonna be I'm gonna squeeze it in much lighter just to see how it breaks down because that is staying in a hell of a lot longer than what I thought it was gonna do which is great I mean if you wanted to fish in deeper water or keep the, the mix in there you know like sometimes when you're boiling it in and you're putting balls of ground bait in when people boil it in on a pole line for example if you're putting 15 balls of ground bait in you don't put all 15 in under the same pressure under the same consistency because you want them to break down over a duration whatever that duration might be is obviously up to you it could be over the full five hours or it could be over one two or three hours so you put some in really light you put some in under a medium pressure and you can put some in that are really um, uh, under high pressure so that they're going to take much much longer to break down and I think this mix would be suited for that but there you go I mean that's been in there now I don't know how long that's been in three four minutes and it's still within the feeder it's just melting away as you can see but just look how clear the water is you know there's no um, cloud coming off it there's no fizzing there's no um, ingredients coming off it that would normally attract smaller fish you know it's, it's, it's really an inert mix and I can see why this has been suited to the matches that I've fished with it on the bream matches I mean I've won matches on the River Trent with this uh, as well as the natural reservoirs won a festival at Southfield Reservoir with it all bream fishing and I can see why with that sort of a mix so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the feeder out so we can see how much traction comes off the feeder whether it kicks up a big cloud and we'll see whether it does that or whether it just stays really really inert so I'm just going to take this out just as though you've just retrieved the feeder I think we're going to get a bit of a cloud off it because there's still ground bait in the middle of the feeder as you can see so let me just take that out very very fine as you can see it's a fine cloud but over to the right just look how clear it is it's not a, a big wet cloud that's really dispersed throughout the, the whole of the tank like some mixers do that's been out of there now what 10-15 seconds and as you can see it's already um, going down to the bottom now so all that bit of a cloud and everything if you look at the top half of the tank it's clear everything's right down at the bottom so it is quite um, in fact look how inert that's gone if this was a lake or a reservoir or obviously a river the tow or the flow would have taken all that out of the peg now that would have moved downstream or down tow so that I'm sure that that feed area if you want to call it that where the feed landed would be very very clear as regards clarity of water but just look at the top half of the water it's just completely clear now so any sort of a haze and cloud is right down on the deck what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to put another one in but squeeze it much lighter so this is if I was going to cast I don't know 20 meters something like that okay so let's pop this in the tank for you I haven't done this second part of the test before so let's see how it performs this way obviously that's going to kick off some of the ground bait that was already down on the deck when we first put that in and I've squeezed that in much much lighter this time but as you can see that's staying in the feeder quite well as again that's really surprising really surprising it would have been interesting to do this with a much much drier mix you know so if there wasn't as much water in here if it was a drier mix then I dare say it would have broken down much quicker 
but I can see why this was so effective for, for, for you know for the bream and the bigger fish that we've caught with this mix previously. So there we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try this with a, a wet cloud for you. This is a test that I haven't done before for you. Some people love to fish with sloppy ground bait, certainly at certain times of year. Or just to over wet the mix. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this in bang on line above that cage feeder. So I'm just going to over wet that. Okay, so let's just drop this in and see how this performs. Not much cloud at all come off that. That's really surprising. I thought we were going to get a much wetter cloud off that and we haven't. That's gone in more like a paste. And if I leave that in position for you, I'll just move that slightly to there. As you can see, it's just formed a ball of paste on the bottom. And that is why I've had so many messages over the last couple of years of people using this as paste. Some people use Special G Green, they love that for paste, but I know people what have used this for paste fishing as well, and that is obviously why. When you over wet it, you can see that it stayed in a, uh, a paste, basically, lump on the bottom. So again, it's another, uh, another way of using this mix. So that's been very, very interesting. Now, as regards the actual cost and getting a hold of this mix, um, at the current time of filming, lots and lots of tackle companies, bait companies are struggling for stock at the minute because everything's just gone through the roof. This is a mix that's readily available up and down the country. I know a couple of stockists right here where I am in Sheffield, but I have had a quick look on the internet for you, done a bit of research. Now, one of the things that I need to say to you about when you're looking for this on, on, online, I only kind of look at tattle shops. I don't look at um, online retailers because obviously I think it's very important to support your tattle shops wherever you can. But obviously there are some people that live in areas where you can't get older mixes like this because your local tattle shop doesn't stock it. But there are tattle shops up and down the country that obviously um, that, that can send um, goods out through online bookings or just by phoning them up. Now I've seen prices of these ground baits fluctuate greatly on the internet. Now the biggest thing I can say about that is, you know, it's quite often if you shop around you can get deals or better prices. I completely understand people are going to do that, but I've seen advertised prices from five pound a bag, uh, sorry, from three pounds forty nine a bag, right up to six sixty nine a bag. Now the biggest difference there is obviously I know there are some really good websites out there but some aren't detailed enough for my liking and there are bags of this ground bait, same packaging as that, exactly the same. Now I've seen some for sale at £5.95 and I've seen some at £5, however be careful, those websites advertising some of those prices don't tell you the size of bag that they're actually selling. Okay, so please don't make a mistake. If you think you're getting a, a two kilo bag and you're getting a great price on, on a two kilo bag, it could be a one kilo bag. So check that when you order it. But as a benchmark, the general price that I've seen is either £3.49 or £3.50 for a one kilo bag. And the two kilo bags I've seen for around £6.69. So just beware, there are some websites out there, there are quite a lot showing that this mix is out of stock, but that's not specific to this mix. There are lots and lots of tattle items and bait items out there that are out of stock at the moment. So if you are gonna order them, just check the stock with the stockist. But like I say, one kilo and two kilo bags, uh, 349, 350 for one kilo, 669-ish for two kilo. But there are loads of stockists up and down the country that can send them out to you. It's been a mix that I've fished a lot with, so I've enjoyed having a, another recap look at that mix. Hope you've enjoyed this bit of an insight. If you've used it, please let other viewers know by commenting below. If you don't want to miss out on any future videos in this series, hit subscribe just there. Please give this a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And if you want to see the next video in the series, that's just there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.